Um, good afternoon, everyone. Good evening, the people in China, and good afternoon uh, in the Middle East. Maybe good morning in some countries in North Africa. Um, here we are so uh, happy to announce a, a special webinar from uh, uh, Pusin. Uh, we thank Pusin for this enormous support to do the series of webinars concerning the flexible electroscope. Uh, we have two eminent, eminent doctors, professors. They are with a huge experience of uh, retrograde interrenal surgeries. We're going to have two topics that we're going to talk about it. The flexible electroscope, durability, and the cost effectiveness, which is going to be uh, um, uh, presented by Professor Chile uh, from uh, Hospital Yantai Ding Hospital in China. He's a member of in the urology group in Ch uh, of Chinese Urological Association. He is a member of Urological Endoscopic Committee of the Chinese Medical Practitioner Association. He is a well-known member of Standing Committee of Urogenital Committee of China, International Exchange and Promotive Association for Medical and Healthcare. The second topic will be talking about the for the beginners how to start your own unit for in the flexible electroscope, and the best choice is uh, Dr. Mehdi Wasida. He is a previously associate professor of Habib Brokiba uh, in Tunis, and he's a consultant in Sifax. In Sifax private hospital and he has this experience how did he start his uh, uh, endoscopic uh, uh, unit in his hospital let me share the first presentation uh, with the professor Chile to start talking meanwhile we'll take the questions and doing samples uh, between the presentations please professor Chile take the okay uh, thank you dr Said. Thank you for your introduction. Uh, so today, uh, uh, thank also, uh, thank Hussein Medical provide this platform for us to communicate uh, in this uh, specific, uh, situation uh, around the world. So today, my talk is going to be about uh, uh, durability and uh, cost effectiveness uh, of flexible urethroscopes. Uh, as we know, uh, first let me share my screen. Are you able to share it? Yeah, can you, can you see the, my, yes, my... Yes, we see it. Professor. Yes, we see it. All right. Uh, so as we know, flexible uh, urethroscope technology has a uh, uh, 60 years of evolution since its first clinical use in 1960. Uh, however, frequent damage and expensive repair costs remain the major concern with the utilize, uh, utilizing reusable flexible urethroscopes. Uh, uh, this table uh, listed the durability of Different flexible fiber optic urethroscopes from different manuscripts. Before major repair, a flexible fiber optic urethroscope could be used on only for no more than 50 procedures and no more than 80 hours in operating time. Uh, this randomized uh, prospective uh, multi institutional clinical trial compared the different flexible uh, fiber optic urethroscope in durability, the authors concluded that among these flexible fiber optic urethroscopes made by different manufacturers, none is more durable than others. This study demonstrated that newly purchased flexible fiber optic urethroscopes provided 80 to 80, uh, to, uh, 40 to 48 uses prior to initial repair, while refurbished ones averaged 11.1 .1 uses before needing further repair. This result suggests that after damage occurred to a flexible fiber optic urethroscope, 
more damage occurred with greater frequency. The cost of maintaining previously used flexible fiber optic ureteroscopes should be carefully considered in comparison to the cost of purchasing a new one. Uh, this manuscript analyzed the location and uh, etiology of flexible and semi-rigid ureteroscope damage based on data from four major ureteroscope manufacturers. Uh, the authors found that flexible ureteroscope damage at the figure shows often, often occurs to Across to a uh, working channel shaft, deflection components, and uh, eyepiece. And the major damage causes or working channel damage from laser burden or laser burn or instrument passage and the extreme deflection with an invariable instrument. They concluded that. By taking precautions to eliminate laser fiber induced damage and by avoiding over deflection, the damage occurrence and the repair costs of flexible ureteroscopes can be minimized. Of course, improved storage and handling of these instruments is also necessary, but the key point in maximizing the longevity of these commonly used instruments is the physician and the staff awareness of fragility of these delicate instruments. As this manuscript demonstrated, if carefully used, flexible ureteroscope durability can be improved up to 100 procedures. Are uh, digital flexible ureteroscopes more durable than fiber optic ones? This study compared digital Cobra Vision flexible ureteroscope with the fiber optic Flex X2 used in RIS Boston man management. The comparison of both flexible ureteroscopes was performed in terms of and stone characteristic operative outcomes durability and the cost effectiveness. As we can see from the table, the digital Cobra vision has higher purchase and repair costs without any difference in durability as compared to fiber optic Flex X2. Moreover, it has no benefit over Flex X2 in terms of surgical outcome. In addition to purchase and the repair costs. There are complex and uh, multiple uh, personnel involved uh, reprocessing costs. In this time-driven activity-based costing study, the authors uh, created process maps and assigned the cost for each step in that pathway. What we found that was the average reprocessing time was about 229 minutes. The total cost of that reprocessing was about $36. But I think what most dramatic is how long it takes to process through, through this pathway. And the inefficient reprocessing and unavailability of your retroscopes sent out for repair can contribute to expensive operating room delays. In addition, uh, there may be patient safety issues associated with flexible ureteroscope reprocessing. This manuscript detailed an outbreak of adpanum resistant antibacter urinary tract infections. In 2010, they also found that adpanum resistant antibacter were identified from urine cultures of 15 patients who had undergone flexible ure ureteroscopy prior to the, to the infection. When the author assessed the source of these recurrent infections, it found 
the outbreak of I was due to the disinfection failure of a contaminated flexible scope, which had been colonized by a resistant colon probably after being used on the PS1 patient. So then, taking all these information together, we can see how the has been. The idea of a flexible urethroscope may be on the high and expensive repair costs notable flexible urethroscopes, as well as the complexity of issues that are associated with reprocessing and the sterilization of reusable endoscopes. The first generation of single-use flexible urethroscope technology is fiber optic and uh, has limited deflectability. In recent years, single-use digital flexible urethroscopes made by different manufacturers has gained popularity in clinical practice. In general, the functional capability of these single-use digital flexible urethroscopes including deflection, irrigation, and optical properties are comparable to those of con conventional reusable ones. Sorry. This study evaluated and uh, compared the environmental impact of Lisville single-use flexible urethroscopes with Olympus URVF reusable flexible urethroscopes. The solid waste generated and the energy, energy consumed during each case were quantified and uh, converted into their equivalent mass of carbon dioxide released. If reusable URVF go through the life cycle of 180 uses and 11 repairs, its carbon fo footprint per case is similar to that of single use, at least of you, suggesting that both reusable and single use flexible urethroscopes have comparable impact on environment. Although single-use flexible urethroscopes demonstrate certain different values as compared to reusable flexible urethroscopes, cost metrics of these devices is uh, going to be important when they are utilized in different clinical settings. The total cost per case of a single-use flexible urethroscope is mainly the acquisition cost. While the total cost of reusable flexible urethroscope includes the original purchasing cost, repair cost, reprocessing cost, and labor cost. This study is a micro-costing analysis comparing single-use Lisville device with a reusable flexible fiber optic urethroscope URF P6. The authors collected the workflow data including intraoperative events, post operative reprocessing cycle timing, uh, consumables that were used, and uh, urethroscope cost data. From this figure drawn uh, from the study, we can see the total cost per case was similar between the two scopes. Uh, $2,799 for URF P6 on the left, and $2,852 for this view on the right. As we look at the figures of uh, themselves, we see for this view, 
device, for this view device, the greatest cost component was the uh, acquisition of the scope followed by the, the operating room time. And for URF P6, the operating room time was the greatest uh, cost component followed by scope repair costs. The total cost of, for reprocessing and uh, disposal was fairly low in both settings. So the authors concluded that the cost of this view acquisition was higher per case compared to reusable URF P6. But savings were realized in labor, consumables, and repair. When accounting for these factors, the total cost per case utilizing single-use laser view scope and the reusable URF P6 scope were comparable. While individual institutions vary with regard to case volume and the cost control strategies, this study demonstrated that single-use flexible urethroscope is a cost-effective alternative to reusable fiber optic flexible urethroscope. Another, another study is a cost-benefit analysis looking at the economic implications of a reusable flexible digital urethroscope. If we look at the materials and, uh, and the methods uh, of this study, what we see are the urethroscopic procedures were prospectively recorded over the 12 months period. All flexible urethroscopies were performed using the Calstall Flex XC. Digital is a digital urethroscope. They assessed the cost based on the original purchasing cost and the repair exchange fees divided by the number of cases. Then they, uh, they created an algorithm to include the per case reprocessing costs and to calculate the benefit to cost ratio. They compared these costs to potential costs of a single use flexible digital urethroscope. So specifically in this case, the laser view platform. The cost of single use laser view device was based on the marketplace at the time of this study. Certainly, prices will change based on the ever-changing market. This figure presented in this study shows the total cost benefit in the vertical axis over the number of cases in the horizontal axis. Based on the costs of the author, the institution, the break-even point comparing the reusable Flex FC platform and the single-use list view platform was achieved at 99 flexible ureteroscopy cases. After which, the cost-benefit comparison favored a reusable, a reusable scope over single-use scope. Therefore, it appears that a single-use flexible ureteroscope may be cost-beneficial in centers with uh, lower case volumes per year, uh, but institutions with a high volume of cases may find reusable flexible uh, urethroscope cost beneficial. The threshold of cases per year of an institution for preferring reusable, uh, uh, reusable urethroscopes instead of single-use urethroscopes will vary. And this cost comparison will not mm, directly be reflective of the viability of single-use flexible urethroscope in other institutions, but the concepts of the algorithm can be used to determine whether reusable or single-use flexible urethroscope is financially advantageous with the cost 
a variable being adjusted to the current marketplace rates. In this retrospective cost analysis of a single center reusable, flexible uh, eurythroscopy program, the authors assessed the economic aspects of reusable flexible eurythroscope application compared to the potential costs and benefits of single-use laser wheel platform. They then proposed the indications for single-use flexible eurythroscope based on potential risk factors of scope damage, such as multiple large stones uh, in the lower kidney pole and a steep infundibular pelvic angle. If urologists recognize that a certain case will likely result in scope breakage, then perhaps it's more cost effective to use a single use scope. Through the review of the literature aforementioned, we are able to identify three cost analysis models that be undertaken to try to define how single use flexible urethroscope can be brought into a clinical practice in different settings. But these analyses mainly focused on the financial aspect, not accounting for occupational hazards associated with the flexible urethroscopy procedure of itself. In this study investigated the prevalence and uh, possible causes of hand problems among endourologists who routinely perform flexible urethroscopy compared with the controls of psychiatrists. Hand and wrist problems were reported by 32% of endourologists compared with 19% of psychiatrists. P-value is 0.0486. Relative risk is 1.69. So hand and wrist problems are very common among endourologists. Other orthopedic uh, complaints among practicing endourologists are also reported to be common and correlated with uh, the annual uh, caseload of endoscopic procedures. More ergonomic platforms are needed to be developed and thereby reduce the uh, endourologists exposure to these occupational hazards. So ergonomics should be a factor to consider when choosing a flexible urethroscope. As we know, lighter instrument could be more helpful in decreasing operating time and muscular fatigue and increasing operative accuracy than a comparatively heavier one. Single-use digital flexible urethroscopes are much lighter than reusable ones. With decreasing weight, less forearm flexation is required, leading to shorter task duration for the single-use digital flexible scopes, which may be due to ease of use and uh, less fatigue. So we reach the, uh, reach the conclusion. In summary, the longevity of reusable flexible your scopes can be maximized by paying scrupulous attention to handling details intraoperatively and extraoperatively. Single-use digital flexible urethroscope is a trend, but cost metrics is going to be important based on case volume and cost control strategies for different institutions. Ergonomic design of single-use digital flexible urethroscope, particularly in lightweight, results in ease of use and less fatigue, reducing the endourologist's exposure to occupational hazards. So, thank you for your attention. Excellent, Dr. excellent. Thank you, thank you, Professor Shi Lei.
Thank you very much. This is a wonderful talk. We will go to, to questioning you about something about the durability, about the not only the cost of the scope, it's about the availability as well, the sterilization, the nurses available. Let's take uh, first uh, the poll that we should participate with our audience. The um, you have you have the poll just in front of you. Do you have an idea? Uh, uh, about your practice in Middle East, China, the world. Um, so please participate in this. I'll give you 30 seconds. More 15 seconds because I have only 12. Okay. So I'll end the poll. This is very amazing because here we say that as you presented before that 99 cases, if you have a very low volume, you should go for disposable utroscope. Here we have a 75% of these of our audience. They have between, um, uh, between 10 cases per month, which is equally with the vacation, everything, which would be like around 100. So this is, this is a good indication that uh, they, most of the people, they need the disposable utroscope. Let's go for another poll, please. This is another poll. Give you 30 seconds to see. That's, that's the, as you see, Professor Chi, that uh, the percentage is uh, quite uh, nearly, but most of the people, uh, like, uh, it's like uh, between 1.5 to 2 centimeters. Here we come to the presentation of uh, Dr. Mehdi Basida. Uh, keep in mind this Dr. Basida, because you are, well, you were trained in, um, in France, and uh, you started your uh, endoscope, endoscopic unit in, in the private sector. So you're gonna present your presentation for those beginners who want to start the uh, endoscopic, especially flexible utroscope. Um, what I need, what should I know, and how do I start? How do I discuss with the administration? These are very important keys uh, from the urologist uh, to convey to the administration because without the administration and the budget, you cannot achieve that. Please uh, proceed, Dr. Mahdi Brasida, to your presentation. Mehdi, you are, you, are, you are hearing us? On oh, level mute, wait, okay. Do you hear me now? Yes, yes. Okay, thank you, Dr. Saeed. Uh, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, uh, everybody. Uh, first of all, uh, uh, please excuse me my bad English because you know we are in Tunisia and <laughs> Maghreb, we are francophone. So if you listen any amazing or strange uh, words, don't worry about this. It could be a mixture of two or three languages. I, I will help French, you. I will help English. I, will. I don't know. So I will help you. Thank you. So it's a real pleasure for me to participate with you in this international webinar about flexible ureteroscopy. I was invited by my friends in Pulse and Company. Thank you, LB. Thank you, Celia, for your confidence on my person. I'm very happy also to be with, uh, with you, with my friend, Dr. Said and to meet for the first time Dr. Shila, uh, Shaidi. Why me presenting this topic? How to start your own activity in flexible ureteroscopy? Uh, I, am cons I present myself, I am consultant in urology, now in private activity. Uh, I was professor in uh, University of Sfax. My training was first in Tunisia, then in France, and then I worked two years in Saudi Arabia. In it, uh, I had the chance to meet and work with, uh, uh, let, me, let me say, a great person, a super endo-urologist. With him, I learned a lot about flexible ureteroscopy, Dr. Saeed Belhamri. Uh, Saeed was a colleague, a friend, a brother, <laughs> and uh, a good mentor for me. So thank you, uh, Dr. Saeed. 
uh, I still consider myself as a beginner because in Tunisia, Maghreb, and Africa in general, flexible ureteroscopy began from uh, for also uh, almost four or five years. And until now, the majority of urologists find it difficult to start regularly their activity in flexible ureteroscopy because of the lack of technology, which is not available in all hospitals, but also because lack of skills in a socioeconomic context, not very appropriate, not very rich. I feel uh, many urologists are afraid of this uh, activity. So in fact, in our private hospital, we have developed a unit of on urology in which we have all the necessary technologies and the accessories to do PCNL, rigid or flexible ureteroscopy. So my objective today is to share with you uh, our beginning experience in the implementation of our on urology uh, unit. I want to transmit the necessary things and knowledge that I have learned in France and uh, with Dr. Said and to encourage urologists who are still hesitant to start this activity in a safe, in a safe way. Uh, next slide. I don't know why I, I cannot move to, to the next slide. Uh, press, uh, put the arrow over the screen. Okay, thank you. So uh, I declare, first of all, that I have no conflicts of interest uh, with any company. I am just a friend of Saeed Ben Hamri. <laughs> this is uh, our first meeting in SPAX in, in uh, 2007. And this is uh, us in the Saudian way, uh, enjoying eating together in 2018. For information, and to respect the copyright, I used many videos from his presentations. Uh, so uh, thank you uh, another time, uh, Dr. Sai. Oh, yeah, but so, we will begin. As an introduction, so flexible ureteroscopy is an effective, reproducible, and mini invasive technique. It respects the anatomy of the ureter and pyelocalicial cavities, and postoperative uh, recovery is generally fast and safe. This technique has been developing during the last 15 years. The development of miniaturized flexible instruments associated with the Holmium YAG laser have made it possible to broaden the indications and to offer this technique as first line treatment of urinary stones uh, in case of limits, failures, or of uh, other treatments uh, for the conservative treatment of some upper tract ureteral carcinomas and for the treatment of ureter ureteral or pyeloureteral junction stenosis. So uh, every urologist must ask those two questions, uh, two questions before, uh, before anything. First question, what we should know before we, we sorry, sorry, uh, I don't see my, uh, I, uh, okay. First question, what uh, we should know before we start to do flexible ureteroscopy? Uh, sure, we uh, must know well about the patients, the cases, the indications, know well about the technique and the, materi uh, and the material. Second question, then how to set up a functional unit in flexible ureteroscopy? Sure, by a good management of human resources and mat material resources. We will try to answer those questions. What about the indications? As you see, flexible ureteroscopy give you the opportunity to treat many pathologies, stone diseases and non-stone diseases. Now we are in 2020, and we must to say that indications in the management of urinary stones have changed, have changed radically over the past 20 years. Now, flexible ureteroscopy has an important place. Sure, it cannot replace ESWELL or PCNL, as there are still indications for them, but we do more and more ureteroscopies and we do many challenges with this technique. Open surgery, I think, keeps a very minimal place. As you see in uh, EAU guidelines, flexible ureteroscopy now can be used in almost all sizes of stones. But I think it is prudent to select well cases of small stones in the beginning and not to attack big stones or lower calyx stones. It will come gradually with experience, little by little. 
we can extend indication to more difficult cases. Dr. Ben Hamri has an excellent conference talking about this, this with details. Concerning nose diseases, there, are, there is tumoral and non-tumoral pathologies. Indications can be for diagnostic or therapeutic goals. It's not our topic today. After the indications, we must know well about the patients, the case, and well select them. We must start with the fit patients, small stones, not very hard stones. We must do a good pre-therapeutic assessment with a necessary CT scan with contrast uh, and uh, uh, urography. The second uh, thing to answer the first question is to know well about the technique and the material. Know well about the technique. I know this is the real problem and challenge for, uh, for each of us because this technique requires specific learning and hands-on training to achieve good skills. So why specific training is required? Because first, it needs complex and, uh, complex and expensive materials and uh, multiple accessories, like we see in these uh, uh, pictures. Second, it acquires new gestures different from open uh, surgery and also from rigid ureteroscopy. The surgeon must do a permanent mental work to be well oriented in space in three dimensions. He have only three movements to do this, turn at the right, at the left, ventral and dorsal deflection, and move forward and backward. Only three movements in three, uh, three dimensions. Uh, so this training benefits now from technological development with different models of uh, uh, simulators. In a recent uh, meta-analysis, the learning curve is uh, long with almost uh, 60 cases to be efficient and uh, uh, competent. Fortunately, there are many solutions to achieve uh, a good training. Uh, every urologist can now read papers and watch videos. Uh, we can multiply workshops, uh, simulator sessions, uh, tips, and, uh, tips and tricks, conferences. This is not our topic today, but just to say that there are many uh, opportunities to have a specific training, uh, master classes, webinars. Thanks, uh, thanks, Corona. Now we have many webinars uh, in uh, all times. Uh, we can also learn from, uh, from the monitor. Uh, and also we can work in a group in groups of urologists. For example, here in SFAX, we have a friendly association of almost 40 urologists. And you communicate together in a Facebook group. Many urologists are still hesitant to begin their activity. So I proposed that everyone who have a case share the, uh, share the time and the place of the operation. And so each colleague who wants to learn and to progress could assist. So together, I think we can progress faster. This was the technique. Now, in addition to uh, the technique, we must know well about the material before uh, starting our activity and our uh, own unit in, uh, of flexible ureteroscopy. There are three components which are necessary to master the scope, the laser, and the accessories. So uh, we will talk about history. The concept of flexible ureteroscopy dates from 1982 with the works of Martinez, Pinero, and Perez Castro. Then ondoscopes have undergone several changes as the technology has advanced. In 1987, the old generation of fiber optic flexible ureteroscopes appeared with an active deflection, with only an active deflection of uh, 180 degrees in the ventral and in the dorsal direction activated by a lever located on the handle. There is also a passive deflection mechanism, like we see here, obtained by forcing the curvature of the actively flexed endoscope. This mechanism appears to, uh, if the scope is pressed on the pilocalcial cavities, uh, this allows to reach the uh, uh, lower calyx. Well, from 2001, Companies produced a new generation of scopes having at least one active deflection at 270 uh, degrees 
in the ventral direction for all companies and for some companies, stores, uh, stores and wolf, also in dorsal deflection. Preserving the characteristics of standard uh, all generation scopes like diameter, length, working channel, it is this, this uh, complete deflection at 2, uh, 270 degrees that characterizes those new scopes. So as we say, the deflection is 270 degrees ventral and dorsal only in flex, flex X2 and uh, Viper from uh, Wolf. In Olympus and the Gyrus Acme, the dorsal deflection is still 180 degrees only until now. Generally, uh, those fiber, fiber optic scopes have those characteristics. A middle length of 70 centimeters, the distal end is uh, uh, seven French, and the proximal end on the handle size is nine uh, French. Concerning the work channel, there is a 3.6 uh, French working channel in almost all scopes, admitting the passage of instruments up to 3.2 French, as well as for irrigation. There is one or two bundles of optical fibers for illumination, and a bundle for, of optical fibers for the transmission of images to the endoscope unit, the optical at zero degrees. This is for fiber optic uh, uh, scopes. Uh, so the position, of, uh, uh, the position of the working channel is variable depending uh, on the companies. This can have repercussions on the procedure, but I think that the surgeon must adapt himself uh, to all working channel uh, positions, like we see here in the, in the picture. The working channel have one or two inputs, lower lock connectors, for connecting an irrigation and passing an instrument uh, at the same time. The control lever allows deflection movements, but the direction of uh, uh, the movement differs between Europe and United States, like we see here. The deflection amplitudes are limited by the use of large diameter instruments, like more than three French, but are completely observed by using small instruments uh, uh, less than two French. So we use usually two, 270 micron laser fiber, and we keep uh, uh, 360 or uh, 70 uh, for PCN. As you see here, the optical qualities of those scopes are variable from one factor manufacturer to another and depend on the number and quality of the optical fibers used for image transmission. Depending on the number of optical fibers used, a honeycomb image effect will be displayed on the monitor the use of smaller optical fibers, more than uh, 5,000 fibers, improve, sure, the honeycomb effect, but increases the fragility of those optical fibers. Since uh, then, since 2007, the companies, uh, Gyrus Acme and Olympus and then uh, Stars, have produced a digital uh, flexible scope. Then came other uh, companies, uh, uh, other multiple companies uh, produced their own uh, digital uh, scopes. This technology improve, improvement, this technology, uh, technological improvement has considerably improved the quality of the endoscopic image, like, like we see here, between Flex X2 and Flex XC from uh, STIRS by eliminating the honeycomb effect. However, the external diameter of those digital erythroscopes has been increased nine French at the distal and 10.9 at the proximal end due to the size of the sensors currently one millimeters. Then now recently came disposable or single use uh, scopes like we see here Pusen. There are other uh, companies like uh, Boston Scientific and, and now many other uh, companies have their own uh, digital single use uh, scopes. Generally, the length is 65 centimeters, less, uh, than, uh, less uh, of uh, five centimeters than uh, fiber optic uh, scopes. The diameter is the same at the distal end or the proximal part, almost nine, nine French. It's a little more than optical fibers, which uh, uh, the diameter is uh, 7.5 uh, uh, French. 
Those disposable scopes are convenient and safe. We, we plug and play, uh, no problem. There is no press infection, no sterilization is required, no maintenance, less manpower and material resources. In 2018, uh, Poussin presented their digital uh, uh, disposable scope 7.5 French, which is a real revolution uh, in the Chinese Congress of, uh, Congress of Urology. But I think it's not officially launched. Evan Pewson have already got the certificate. I don't know why. I want to turn uh, back to turn back to the fiber optic reusable scopes. There are many precautions necessary to preserve our scope uh, in our new unit and not to damage it quickly because they are fragile, non autoclavable instruments. So their sterilization must be by cold soaking, not by autoclave. So precautions must be, must be during uh, storage sterilization procedures and also during intraoperative using. I advise to uh, dedicate a special storage place like this dressing, dressing uh, that we uh, have in our unit and to take it vertical, vertical, not horizontal. We must always Sorry, we must always check tightness, flexibility, deflection, visibility before and after any rotoscopy procedure. We must be delicate in moving, in moving the scope. Here in, one, in our unit, we have uh, only one dedicated OR technician who do this who do these precautions, Mr. Adel. He check deflection, visibility, flexibility. Visibility, okay. In the beginning and in the end of every procedure, I advise this. Here we wash the working channel after using, uh, after the procedure. You can use uh, compressed air, air to keep it permeable and clean. You see here. In intraoperative use, uh, there are possible damages like broken fiber optics. Uh, this is common and uh, rarely requiring repair. But uh, the, the second damage, is, uh, which is a loss of tightness of the working channel by laser perforation, uh, needs, uh, needs, uh, needs repair or replacement of the device. Nowadays, with learning and respecting the rules of maintenance and handling, the lifespan of new generations exceed 30 to 50 procedures before a first repair. Olivier Traxer and Saeed Belhamri published some papers about that, as we see here. Uh, here we pass to the uh, laser. The most laser uh, used laser for flexible rotoscopy is uh, Olmium laser uh, source. More and more we are talking about Tilium fiber uh, laser as an alternative source. Uh, we will talk about uh, Olmium yeah, classic. The main mode of action is the transmission of light energy into thermal energy, photothermal effect, with vaporization effect. This energy is absorbed by water, is very precise and has reduced tissue penetration. This laser is particularly efficient for the intracorporeal tetropsy of all stones, whatever the nature of those stones. This is also perfectly suitable to tissue application, section, coagulation, vaporization of tumors and stenosis. Finally, laser energy cuts different materials such as double G, uh, catheters, uh, guide wires, nitinol baskets, so be careful. The power of 10, uh, 10 uh, what is more than sufficient to process uh, stones. The holmium laser, uh, the holmium laser is not a continuous laser. It works on a pulse mode, each pulse being defined by energy, frequency, and pulse duration. Which parameters to use? What combinations? This is the question. In our unit, thanks to Rokamed, 
uh, our laser that, uh, that we are using. Uh, this uh, takes our life easy with predefined parameters. We just choose stones or tissue, and then we choose the shape of the stone, and then we choose uh, uh, dusting or fragmentation. Generally, there are two uh, modes, dusting with high frequency and low energy, or fragmentation with low frequency and high, and, uh, high energy. There is a, a third uh, mod, popcorn effect. I try to be, I try to be faster. Uh, not that uh, the 3.6 flange working channel uh, only accepts fibers of 2 and 230, 60, uh, 360 microns to allow sufficient residual irrigation and acceptable deflection. Now, we will talk about accessories. We begin with uh, irritable access sheet. Uh, irritable access sheet are like trocars in laparoscopy or on, on plats again in uh, PCNL. It facilitates uh, multiple entries and exits, uh, avoids a dematose reaction, maintains a low intra-renal pressure, limits operating time, improves irrigation and vision, and protects the fibroscope and extends its lifespan. I advise uh, any beginner to uh, work only with irritable uh, access sheet. They have all an outer uh, hydrophilic coating. They differ by their types, uh, technique, uh, external and internal uh, diameter size. Here, for example, we have one guide uh, irritable access sheet. For example, for example, just for example, a proxies from BAD, the navigator from Boston Scientific. Uh, the inconvenient of this type, this is the video of uh, Dr. Said, uh, is that we must introduce the safety guide before, so we must use cystoscope, the cystoscope twice to introduce two uh, guide wires before. Here we have two examples of coaxial urethral access sheet, uh, flexor from Cook and retrace from Porges. The advantage as we see in this video, is that only one guide allows to introduce the irritable access sheet, and then this guide becomes a safety guide just by removing the introducer. We will see here. We remove the introducer, and then the safety guide is, is here. Okay. Here we have to, uh, sorry. Finally, we have the third type of uh, irritable access sheet, the double lumen like uh, B-flex of uh, Rukamet. This uh, double lumen sheet is very useful for placing a second uh, wire like you see in uh, my video. Uh, when a first one is already in place, even with the internal introducer, we can use only the internal introducer as a double lumen uh, catheter. You will see here, yes, we introduced the second guide, guide wire. Also, the double lumen access sheet can also be used to inject contrast agent into the bilocalicial cavities when a guide wire is already in place. Mehdi, five minutes, please. Uh, yes, I will be. Uh, okay. The, the standard of uh, uh, when you want to choose uh, what to have, uh, like uh, irritable access sheet, is. Uh, uh, 12, 12, 14, 35 centimeters for women and 45 for uh, uh, men. But we can use 10, 10, 12 if the ureter is not very compliant, but we will have less irrigation and small stone fragments. In this paper published by Traxer and the, the Ben Hamri, we, we can have an idea about compatibility of different scopes and ureter access sheet. As we see, stars flex X2. And Olympus uh, URP6 are compatible with all urethral access sheets because they have smallest French size. 
concerning the guide wires, nitinol hydrophilic guide wires are recommended for flexible electroscopy to protect the working channel of those cups. The specific guide wires have an externally flexible and atraumatic distal type tip and a highly malleable body. As we see, we have regular or stiff body and straight or angular. Uh, the length is almost uh, 150 centimeters. We prefer still a stiff one as shown with the, uh, the video of Dr. Said. Baskets. The baskets must be uh, particularly suitable for flexible antrarenal erythroscopy because of their flexibility, resistance, and atraumatic tip. Those baskets are made of nitinol, which is the source of their flexibility and resistance. There is currently a whole range of baskets of different designs and diameters. You must choose zero tip or tipless, tipless to be atraumatic to the pilocalicial cavities. An instrument with a maximum size of 3.2 French is easily introduced into the 3.6 channel working channel. Uh, however, it is recommended to use the instrument as small as possible to preserve the maximum space in the working channel for good irrigation and to keep a good deflection degree. Nowadays, I advise 1.9 French diameter, uh, who, which represents a standard diameter to the baskets. No more than 2.2 French anyway. Concerning the length, we need 120 centimeters. Some companies will give you zero tip, but the length is 90 centimeters meters, it won't be good because uh, it will stop in the working channel. Finally, the basket should be more than, uh, 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 the, the basket diameter should be more than 12 millimeters so we can catch any stone of one centimeter. We can see here uh, different types of and designs of uh, baskets. I will pass. Okay. Concerning the fluid management, flexible uh, retroscopy requires working with optimal flow and pressure irrigation for best visibility. There are different systems which exist to increase the flow of irrigation. We prefer and we advise to use gravity irrigation of at 60 centimeters with occasional uh, manual pressure like this device, uh, Traxer, uh, Traxer Flow. The automated pump is adjusted to increase the infusion rate without significantly increasing the antrapelic pressure. I will pass. We don't. I am. I have only, yes, yes, yes. Now we return to the second question to finish our presentation. I will try to answer quickly how. To set up a function, we finished with the, 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 the indication, the technique, the material. Now, the question is how to set up our functional unit in flex, uh, flexible telescopy, uh, uh, the management of human resources, of material resources. Uh, look at this uh, diagram that I prepared. Uh, uh, I prepared this diagram for another presentation of uh, laparoscopy, how to begin laparoscopy. Uh, and I changed, changed it to, uh, in this presentation. In a hospital, the ondo urology and, flexi and flexible electroscopy team should include all those components. Ideally, an experienced ondo urologist with one assistant, only one assistant, and a dedicated and one a dedicated staff to this intervention, with a specific training for all who, who perform storage and sterilization procedures, and by limiting the number of users in the same department. We can preserve ondoscopes, shorten the learning curve and acquire the skills required quickly. As you see, the preparation of the room must be equivocal, a routine work, nothing should be left to chance. Here in our uh, unit, uh, we always use this setup, whatever the side of the stone. As we see here, the table have four areas, work on working uh, area, uh, dirty area, wet area, so it must be a routine work. In the end. In the end, I want to share those two slides from my Algerian friend, Dr. Hisham Kwisam, who uh, said that on the urological spirit is OPPD. Oh, it's observe, 
P is practice, P is progress, and D is developing skills. So we can uh, all become understand men. Let's work together to reach our objectives. I like to finish by this French proverb. You know, Saïd, I'm a, a Francophile. Seul, on va plus vite. Ensemble, on va plus loin. Donc, in English, alone, you can go faster, but together, you can go further. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mahdi. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Um, I have uh, too many questions for Professor... Uh, um, um, uh, let's go for uh, uh, let's go for the um, I will just share the results of the uh, first uh, clinical uh, clinical practice uh, so most of the uh, uh, of the urologist audience our audience they do around 10 cases per month this is a uh, very interesting what do you think professor uh, she um, about the what is the cutoff line? How many utroscope you do per year, and that you don't need a reusable utroscope? You tell him like some areas in China they do only fifty per year. So, do you advise the not to take a reusable at all? Uh, yeah. Uh, 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 pardon. Uh, uh, can you say uh, say your question again? The question, how, what is the cutoff line? How many procedures I do that it doesn't matter? I use only disposable. Because if you pre your, your presentation said around 100. Now you know some people in the remote, in the remote area, they have this 50 cases per year. Are they obliged to take reusable? Uh, uh, I think for uh, low kick volume, uh, uh, execution with the low case volume, uh, the single use flexible urethroscope uh, 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 for a bit because uh, because it uh, can improve on the uh, high frequent. Um, Damage uh, rate and uh, uh, and reduce the repair cost uh, and uh, also the repressing cost and the labor cost. So uh, for the institution uh, medical center with low case volume, uh, single use flexible urethroscope uh, is suitable. Uh, but for uh, high volume. Um, institutions uh, reusable uh, may be cost beneficial uh, if the but at the break even point uh, may vary uh, you know based on the market uh, market place risk uh, of different uh, uh, flexible user of scopes uh, so uh, uh, in general in general for the institution with the high volume cases, uh, reusable, uh, flexible ureteroscope uh, is cost beneficial. Thank you. Mehdi, you see the poll just in front of you? Yeah. Okay. As a beginner, most of the people look at this 35% and 46%. You're almost going for 80% of the people they are looking for the flexible for two centimeter 1.5. What is your advice as a beginner? Should I start with two centimeter 1.5 as most of the urologists they are doing or as a beginner, what should I do? Start with one centimeter, five millimeter? Yes, I think in the beginning, uh, we must uh, well select uh, the patient, the case, uh, a case of uh, not very hard stone, not very uh, big stone. I think 1.5 centimeters is good to begin. Uh, we must avoid the uh, lower calyx uh, stones. Uh, and uh, I want to return to your question to Dr. Shilai, what are the cutoff of, uh, and the number of uh, uh, procedure to do, uh, uh, to, do uh, to use uh, uh, single use or, uh, 
are uh, reusable. I think if, if as beginner, as beginner, if we do less than five procedure per month, uh, 60, 60 procedures per year, it's Without better. Yeah. 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 Yes, I answered. Yes, but I answered uh, to your question. Uh, for, uh, to, oh. to your question, I answered it already. I think okay. 1.5 centimeters uh, to not exceed in the beginning of experience. And then gradually we can uh, extend the indications and uh, we can uh, do uh, ever, uh, even uh, more than two centimeters after. Okay. Uh, Professor Chi, you can see here in the, the poll that most of the people they like to use 80%, they like to use always the guide wear as a safety guide wear. Most of the experienced urologists, they said, no, uh, wireless, wireless. What do you, wh what's your message for the beginner and for the endurologist starts doing a flexible electroscope whether disposable or usable? Do I need a safety guide wear? Uh, in my uh, yeah in my daily practice, I uh, I have never you I have never uh, used the safety guide wire. Um, also in my institution, um, I know in China most uh, uh, in most uh, uh, medical center uh, for endurologists they don't use safety guide wire during uh, flexible uh, ureteroscopy procedures. Um, but for for starter, for starter, I think um, safety guard wire uh, may be helpful in some uh, in some settings, uh, such as um, bleeding and uh, your ureter, uh, your ureter perforation uh, may be helpful. Um, also, it uh, does not add. Uh, any um, mobility, so I think uh, uh, it's reasonable for a starter to use the safety guard wire. Okay, good. And here another another poll, um, uh, Professor Chi. Uh, people they they have a big debate about using the access sheet. The, uh, Meh Professor Mehdi presented that access sheet will reduce the pressure, will save the time, and these uh, advantages. How frequent in China using access sheet? Uh, yeah, I um, I use the uh, access sheets uh, routinely uh, for flexible ureteroscopy procedure uh, because uh, just as uh, Doctor Mahdi uh, said, um, it it it's use it's very useful during this procedure. Mehdi, what do you think about using access sheet, please? You presented it. Yes, like I said in my presentation, I think it's necessary. The use of access sheet is really necessary to beginners or not beginners. Uh, everyone should use uh, a retail access sheet to, to preserve the, the kidney and uh, to work uh, safely in, uh, with, uh, with low pressure, I think. Okay. okay. And uh, Professor... For the guide uh, uh, for the guide wire, yeah. if, you, if you want, I have uh, to say something. Uh, yes. I, I think that the guide wire, the safety guide wire is, is a good thing. Uh, uh, but in the real life, in the real life, I don't think that there is a, a real value to, uh, to this in the real life. Uh, so we can advise when we do, uh, when we are not a beginner, when we, when we are advanced, we can uh, uh, take um, safety safety guide wire in only uh, some difficult cases. What what do you do, uh, Dr. Said? I use them if uh, I need it. I need them. Yeah. Okay. Okay. There, there is another poll for Professor Chi. That how frequent you put a double G stent post flexibilitoscope? Most of the audience will wonder. Do I need the stents because, you know, the, the most problematic things, but more than 40 or 50 percent of the cases, they are bothered by the double G stent, not the self itself, the flexible electroscope. The flexible electroscope does not give the pain. The double G stent gives the pain. So uh, do you have an idea how do I omit putting a double G stent or should I do uh, or should I stent the patient always? You heard the question, Professor Chi. Sorry? 
you heard the question. Do you have to do you have to put a double distance in every single case of flexible retroscope or retro retrograde anterior surgery? You mean uh, post the uh, post operatively? Uh, I, I usually put a, a double G stent in the ureter, uh, but for small stone, small stones, I just uh, uh, put the double G uh, about uh, two or three days. Uh, uh, two or three days after the operation, I will remove the double G. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, when I place the double G, a thread is connected. Uh, it's uh, connected to. It's tied to the uh, digital tip of the uh, double G dent. So um, uh, the thread is uh, come out of, uh, through the urethra. Uh, so it's uh, very convenient to remove it uh, after the operation for small stone uh, patients. So for a large stone, more than uh, two or three centimeters, so I usually put the double G uh, in, in, in without a thread, or uh, usually the double G will uh, will stay in the in, in the patient body about uh, three to four weeks after the operation. Okay. Professor Lee, this is a very good question because we raised the poll here regarding that. Do you think the reusable urethroscope caused the cross infection of the UTI? That's why we shifted shift ourselves to disposable. Surprisingly, that the people, our people, our audience are separated in the, their opinion. You can see in the screen. Do you see it in the screen, sir? Professor Chi, yeah, you see you it in the poll at the screen. Do you see 30, 47 percent, 27 percent? No, we don't see the, the statistics. Poll. No. Okay, just uh, let me just give you the hint. This is the thing. You see it now? Yes. Okay, you can see that most of the people, they believe that reusable urethroscope is, is causing cross-infection. Do you agree with them? Uh, yes, it does happen. Mm. But no, uh, but uh, rarely, but rarely. So with, so, uh, so it, with this infection yeah, yeah. Go ahead. of uh, uh, of uh, in our hospital, um, we have never uh, encountered this situation. And Mehdi, do you believe that reusable utroscope caused the cross infection? And that's why you are using disposable like Yusin and others? Yes. In the literature, they say that uh, uh, this is really a reason, uh, cross infection uh, in the use of uh, reusable scopes. But uh, I, in my practice, I use uh, both. I use uh, uh, STARS, uh, Flexix2, and I use uh, Pusen. And really, I don't see the difference. Uh, for me, uh, even with the uh, 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 reusable, until now, we don't have cross infections. I don't know. You have, you have to know one of the great study that has been published that they found that 60% at least of the staining of hemoglobin inside the working channel the, the, for the reusable utroscope. This is a big information. That's why people, they think, they, th they think that crystallization is not always the same in each hospital. Hospitals yeah. different. The CFD, the center, they differ. Some people, they're using Cydex. Some people, they're using powder. Some people, they're using plasma steroid. So this comes to this question, uh, Professor yeah. Chi. I will share this poll to you. How long, because of this, how long do you think that crystallization and processing time of reusable flexible retroscope? For example, if you have one case and you need the other one, do you have the time to crystallize it in 60 minutes, 90 minutes, or 120 minutes? The, the, our audience are separated, are, the, are like equals in every um, 120. We have a big variable time for crystallizing their scope, and this is amazing. Uh, yeah, um, I think the... Uh... Time delay is um, is very 
expensive for high volume cases, uh, uh, cases uh, institution. Uh, so in this setting, uh, I think single use of flexible urethroscopes True. can True. In this situation. True. Mehdi, what do you think about if you have a second patient and you will wait for 120 minutes and the patient is still anesthetized? So what do you do? That you use a disposable or you just wait, use a, use your reusable or you have another reusable? No, yeah, no, I, have, I have only one reusable, but uh, if you want, uh, let me say in the real life, it's uh, less than 60 minutes. Huh? Uh, it's less than 60 minutes. But... Uh, Yes, Professor Shi, I'm hearing you. Yeah. Yeah. Your comment, yeah. Professor Shi. Yeah, I think, uh, yeah, um, if, if single use flexible ureteroscopes is available, so I think uh, most uh, urologists would like to choose, to choose it, yeah. Okay. Um, we, uh, we have a question from an audience, Professor Shi, that if you have a lower calicial stone, what are the tips and the tricks to reach them? Because sometimes for the beginners or for the endurologists, are difficult to, to introduce the laser fiber or the basket to hold that stone. So what is the main, uh, what is the big three key factors for, to achieve your goal for the lower pole stone? Is it a new fiber? Is it a new scope? Is it this stone uh, um, house field? What do you, what do you, what's your best practice for lower pole stone? Yeah, uh, you mean for uh, local kidney stone? Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, uh, really, uh, the, I uh, assess the IPA uh, in the and pelvic uh, angle. If the angle is uh, uh, less than uh, 30 degree, so I think it, maybe it's hard to uh, reach the stone in the lower pole. Um, but sometimes it's not uh, correct. Um, it's not correct. Uh, during the procedure, um, maybe um, uh, you can reach the lower pole, uh, although uh, the uh, IPA is less than 30 degree. But sometimes, um, it's hard to reach the stone. You can see the stone, but you cannot uh, fragment it with the laser fiber. Uh, so sometimes I um, usually adjust the position, adjust the position uh, to uh, uh, hope to re hope to move the stone uh, to uh, uh, to another position uh, that I can um, I can reach it and uh, fragment it. Uh, uh, Mehdi, you see the yeah. poll results here. So as a beginner, as you started your flexible uteroscope, that's, this is a very nice uh, poll because I believe that the scope, even in my hands, uh, three times, maybe 10 to 15 times, but those people, 20%, they are using the scope more than 30 times, they must be having a good experience or they have a big team. So what is your number of cases that you need a repair in your reusable in Tunisia when you started as a beginner? How many? In Tunisia now, we don't have many experiences, so uh, everyone uh, is working in uh, uh, his... Uh, I, I don't know, uh, Sansa, I, I mean, don't know the I mean, other experiences. Mahdi, Mahdi, yeah. Mahdi, I mean, if you use your reusable, how many operations you do till you break it? Combien d'opérations tu fais le temps qui se casse? Uh, you know, uh, we, are, we are in the beginning in our unit uh, and uh, our scope is still, uh, uh, we, we worked with, uh, I don't know, 20 or 30 uh, procedures now. You didn't break, you didn't break no. your scope? No, no, yeah, no. until now, <laughs> to Chant du Bois. <laughs> <laughs> Professor Chi, how, how frequently in China those doctors, endiologists, they break their scopes? Uh, you know, like um, in my institution, so uh, um, a reusable flexible ureteroscope um, average average uh, thirty five to forty uh, uses before uh, needing further repair. Yeah, and you, that's why you use a disposable ureteroscope. You think? 
It's big help. I would like to use previous flexible ureteroscope. Uh, you know, um, uh, 35 to 40 units uh, for a reusable flexible ureteroscope um, you know, uh, is, is very, um, I, say, I think um, the repair cost is uh, expensive. Um, so uh, if a single use flexible ureteroscope is available, so I would like to choose, choose it. Um, Professor uh, Chi, as, as a member of the education formation in the Chinese and for the training of the flexible ureteroscope, you are a well expert. Look at this poll here, that this people, most of the 50% of the people, they are not feeling uh, comfortable to do flexible ureteroscope. Look at this number. Only 43% they are feeling to, to do independently the flexible ureteroscope. Why, why do you think this is a problem? in the Middle East on the world, despite this is a very benign procedure. Is it the training? Is it the availability of the flexible ureteroscope? What do you, when you're in your country, what, what's, what the obstacles that keep 50% of the urologists away from the tra of, of good exposure? Uh, yeah, uh, in, uh, in China, uh, what I think most uh, urologists don't use a fluoroscopy uh, uh, guidance control or control in the uh, during the fl uh, flexible ureteroscopy procedures. So I think um, um, I think I I, I think um, you know, the training maybe definitely uh, perform the uh, flexible ure ureteroscopy. So is it because of the training or available? What Mehdi in Tunisia? Yes. Why the flexible ureteroscope is not widely common despite this is a, a very uh, a coming uh, procedure in the world. You know that yes. they, from China to the Middle East, we have a lot of stone. So why 50% yes. feeling uncomfortable to do flexible ureteroscope independently? Yes, as I said in my presentation, uh, I, I, I feel that many urologists, the majority of urologists are still hesitant to begin this activity because uh, lack of uh, uh, lack of material lack of material uh, 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 lack of material in the hospitals not uh, all the hospitals have this material and lack of uh, training lack of tra training uh, the, uh, i i think uh, it requires new gestures which are different from from uh, open surgery and and also from uh, rigid ureteroscopy so we can multiply the workshops the the hands on training uh, to feel comfortable when doing uh, uh, when doing uh, uh, ureteroscope, flexible ureteroscopy. And this is a message for Pearson people Go that ahead. you have to increase the workshop and the training for the Middle East and the world. I don't. This is your I don't care. for the success. I, right or I wrong? Mehdi. So I'm telling you that this is a yes. message for Pearson people to increase the work the workshops. From mid, for all the Middle East, exposure, training, training, and again, training. There is no yes. harm. This is one of the, their job, and we thank them because they are doing a great job. Uh, Professor Chi, yes. this is the last poll that we will, we will show you. Look, look at this. In your clinical practice, which solution, uh, way of litiasis you will use frequently? Uh, frequently? That the, you, you can see that only 48% they are using flexible ureteroscope and only 5% using is WL. And we know that the SWL is very common procedure in Middle East. How come our audience, they don't anymore using is WL? Do you think the SWL will fade out? Okay. Uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I think uh, um, flexible uh, ureteroscope, uh, procedure, um, you know, with the uh, technology called advances, um, it will lead to a uh, greater widening of indication of the diagnostic and uh, therapeutic management, um, such as uh, of, uh, of upper urinary pathologies, such as uh, uh, urethritis and uh, urethral tumors. Um, Especially just as uh, Dr. Mahdi uh, said, you know, uh, some uh, 
some uh, fragmentation is triplet, uh, such as sodium, sodium laser. Uh, that can, um, you know, the dust effect, a popcorn effect is very impressive. Uh, so it will uh, widen the, the, the use of flexible ureteroscopes in the practical uh, clinical practice. So um, uh, in, in, the, in this case, um, PCNL and the ESWL um, may be uh, Maybe, maybe, uh, maybe um, uh, the the uses of them may be decreased. Mehdi, uh, yes, yes. The In my activity, I I still I still do as well more than uh, more than this uh, more than this because uh, first we have uh, I, I have two or three as uh, well uh, units near uh, near my office. And then in our country, Israel is uh, uh, the only procedure guaranteed by the security, uh, social security. So uh, uh, flexible ureteroscopy PCNL are not guaranteed by uh, uh, by security social, the public, the public security social, uh, social security. So I do, I do as well more than this. Mahdi, but we have a question from uh, Rawa Ahmed, which is saying that the patient prefer a high Q rate. That's why. They go for peace in a flexible uteroscope. When I hear this debate, when I ask the patient himself, he they wish the, to do is WL. How do you balance between both? How do you say to your patient, this is a very high cure rate, but is WL is, is more less invasive? What do you think? The patient will like to go for invasive surgery with high, uh, with high uh, uh, rate, cure rate or less invasive and like 80 or 50 percent? How do you deal with your patient? If you want the, the reality, in our context, socio-economic context, I deal with my patients with uh, with the money. <laughs> so so uh, so for for them as well is c'est de loin de loin moins cher, less uh, less expensive. Uh, flexible ureteroscopy is uh, I don't know uh, ten, I know. 10 times ten times more expensive. Let's let's go for the last question before I close this webinar for Professor Chi. If you have a patient with one centimeter stone in the mid calyx or the renal pelvis, and you are a very expert of flexible ureteroscope, what do you tell your patient? Is WL or flexible ureteroscope as a first line? Uh, one centimeter in the mid in the mid pole. In the mid pole or in the renal pelvis. Okay. Uh, what do you uh, advise them? WL or flexible? Uh, yeah, yeah. I, I will inform the patient uh, about the benefit and uh, uh, advantage and disadvantage of different uh, of different uh, uh, procedures. So um, it's as uh, a patient discretion. Uh, uh, yes, we, with the communication, we can make the shared decision with the patient. So as we as we always think that the guidelines are the guidelines, we start with the with the informing. Uh, we start with the with the uh, is the WL for example. But I agree with you, Professor Chi, that the patient has to know every information that yes. exposed by every treatment. That's why the trend now is personalized stone management. It's to the patient and the doctors and the situation all together as a one package, and we have the good decision for the patient. I would like to thank you, Professor Chi. Um, of, uh, uh, as uh, one of the expert uh, urologists in the urology in China. Thank you, Professor Mehdi. It's our honor to have you here from Tunisia, the green Tunisia. Thank you, um, thank thank you. you for Peace and Team. Thank you for Elvi for, and uh, for uh, everyone yeah. from Peace and Medical to have this such wonderful webinar for almost 90 minutes. Thank you, everyone. Thank you very much. Hope, uh, thank you. Have a thank good you very night. much. Bye. Bye-bye. Yeah.